the MK Lion Pride is on the brink of disaster. The invading nomads sent them running for their lives, leaving two mothers and their cubs without their protectors. The nomads are actually really, really close and chasing the MKs down. But they've run straight through the spot where the cubs are hidden. Now, two of the cubs are missing. There is a strong possibility they might not have made it. The danger hasn't gone away. The nomads are still in MK territory. But do they have what it takes to permanently dethrone the punks? The nomads are these, the sports to be reckoned with. But when you think of them alone, they are still young males. In Zambia's Luangwa Valley, Two neighboring prides lay claim to the land. The once powerful MKs, with the numbers still rising. And the Hollywood females, who must breed to secure their future. Both prides now face the nomads. A wild card gang of males looking for new territory. Wildlife filmmakers Nathan Pilcher and Sam Davis are in the middle of the action. What's still the <laughs> They are witness every triumph and every tragedy. Can these two prides beat the odds and survive the greatest challenge of their lives? Five in the morning. Camerawoman Sam Davis is on the road early, searching for the besieged MK Pride. The team last saw them two days ago down by the river, regrouping after the nomads attacked. But nobody's seen them since. So while we're driving, just keeping an eye out on the floor, seeing if we can find any fresh tracks, um, give us an indication of which direction they went in last night, and that will help us find them this morning. She's especially eager to find the two MK mothers, Rosa and her sisters, Yuri, who have five young cubs to look after. When the crew found them after the nomads' attack, only Rosa's three cubs were there. Zuri's two were missing. Oh, there she is. Yeah. There she is. So this is amazing. We've just come across the female, some of the mothers, and then into the bushes, um, another mother's walked, which I presume is Rosa, and she had something in her mouth. But she was so quick, we didn't actually get to see what it was, and I'm hoping it was a cub. With any luck, the females will lead Sam to their hiding place so she can do a full head count. The problem is now is that they're going into a really thick area. Oh, I've lost her now. Since the nomads attacked, the gang of four hasn't left MK territory. Their leader, Thor, isn't the biggest of the brothers, but he's the most confident. He leads them deeper into MK territory. They might have already killed two of the MK cubs in an attempt to bring their mother's Yuri back into Estrus. Now, they could be going after Rose's triplets. While Sam continues her search for the cubs, wildlife cameraman Nathan Pilcher is on the lookout for the rest of the missing MK Pride. It was a couple of days now since the nomads came in and chased all the uh, MKs all over the place. So we're gonna go inland and, and try and find them. And, and um, I mean, hopefully they're okay. 
No one knows if the Pride's aging leaders, Axel and Mohawk, are still with them. Nathan covers most of the MK territory. Before he finally catches up with some of the Pride. But it's only three sub-adults, the young teenagers. We've got Maya on the right-hand side, uh, and then her younger brother, Kimber, on the left with a slightly smaller mane, and their slightly older brother facing towards us. Nathan's been filming these siblings since they were born. They're now two and a half years old. He knows they're not quite ready to leave their pride and go it alone. With the gang of nomads now on the loose, they're especially vulnerable. The nomads are particularly aggressive from what we've seen. So these guys would certainly run for their lives, but if the nomads got hold of them, I think, you know, they would give them a real serious injury, if not try and kill them. But the nomads aren't their only problem. They're hungry. Normally, they rely on the expert hunters in the pride, the adult lionesses. Today, they must try to provide for themselves. Although this giraffe is probably only two years old, at 12 feet tall, with a kick that could be fatal, it's an ambitious target. Maya is the boldest of the three. She seems up for the challenge. She settles down a little bit closer. You certainly get lion primes that specialize in large animals like giraffes, but it's not often that you get the lions here taking giraffe. She launched her chase from too far away. A clear sign of her inexperience. The three young siblings need the pride for help, not just with food, but also protection. The problem can be with younger, less experienced lions is they can drop their guard sometimes and not realize the, uh, the risk. They've got no help, no backup. They're kind of on their own at the moment. Under pressure from the nomads, the MK Pride has scattered right across their lands. Far to the south, the Pride's leaders, the punks, are lying low. Brothers Axel and Mohawk have protected the MK Pride for three years. But since the nomads attacked, They've been hiding in the deep south of their territory. The nomads clearly have their sights set on a takeover. But Axel and Mohawk are unlikely to go down without a fight. Outnumbered, for now these two must keep a low profile and bide their time. Sam's still tracking the two MK mothers, Rosa and Zuri, who disappeared into the thick Zambian bush. After hours searching, she finally gets close. Oh, I think they're right here, there's a hither. Calling the cops. Mm -hmm. oh, the cops. And the cub. Goosebumps everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
Rose's three are all safe and sound. But there's still no sign of her sister's missing pair. But then, a tiny ball of fluff emerges from the undergrowth. Five cubs are present and healthy. Usually the lionesses would have introduced the cubs to the rest of the MKs by now. But with the nomads threatening the pride, the sisters want to keep them secret for as long as possible. The cubs are 12 weeks old. So far, they survived on a liquid diet. But today is a big day. Yuri brings a baby warthog. Just amazing. This must be the first time they've actually had meat. A big step in their development. look so cute, but then uh, give them a piece of meat and you can see that this is going to grow up to be a really big predator. It's just quite amazing that at this age the cubs are already showing, showing those signs. Now I'm sure they think that they look all tough and strong, but it just looks adorable. Rose's male cub, Spotty, seems to like the new food to watch their instincts to try and keep the other cubs away from their piece of meat. They're so possessive. He won't share with anyone. An assertiveness that will stand him in good stead. Once he's three years old, he'll leave to try and take over another pride and start a family of his own. If he can survive that long. For now, that's very much in question. Five miles to the north, the neighboring pride of Hollywood females is still recovering from the nomad's vicious attack. Their matriarch, Ava, suffered the brunt of the onslaught. Badly injured, she almost didn't make it. I mean, she has just been brutally attacked. But the bonds of sisterhood run deep, and the others have helped provide enough food for her to pull through. Ava's now led her pride as far to the north as possible, retreating to the edge of their territory. safe from the nomads. But there are others that don't like the sudden appearance of lions. Have to be cautious. 
they're forced to move on. Back in the south, Nathan has followed the three MK teenagers to the river. Maya and her brothers have found the rest of the pride. There's just one problem. They're on the opposite side of the river. It's September, and it hasn't rained for months. At this time of year, the river drops low enough for lions to occasionally cross back and forth. These guys really want to cross and join the rest of the pride, but they've been going up and down the beach, and, um, and they're just really quite nervous. They seem to be walking away from the river at the moment. The Loangwa River has one of the highest concentrations of crocodiles in the whole of Africa. I think lions have a healthy respect for crocodiles, and um, judging by the size of some of them over there, I think that's, uh, that's good for them to have. Lions might have the upper hand on land, but in water, the tables turn, and it's the crocs that rule. And I've seen fully grown male lions pulled under by crocodiles, so crocodiles are really strong. They possess one of the greatest bite forces in the animal kingdom with jaws that once clamped shut are almost impossible to escape. The teenagers haven't yet learned the safest and shallowest crossing points, but the threat of the nomads and the desire to join their family drives them into the water. These three being slightly young, they haven't quite really got the experience and might be a little bit silly and, and cross than they should have. It's, it's the one time that lions are really vulnerable. Maya is now leading. There's lots of hissing going on. She'll be hissing at the, uh, at the crocodiles. Her brothers tentatively follow. in. Maya and the boys pick up the pace. This is lovely. I mean, they're getting really lots of affection from one of the females that's come down to the, the bank to greet them. There's lots of greeting and bonding going on. There's some more coming down. However, not all these lions are MKs. There's a, I mean, one other pride that I know of on the other side, known as the uh, Insefu pride. I'm pretty sure it's them. For much of the year, the Loangwa River acts as a boundary, and the east bank belongs to the Insefu pride. But these two prides have met before, in previous dry season wanderings across the river. I think a lot of these lions over the years will cross each other's path, and they're kind of slightly familiar with each other. There certainly seems to be a bit of acceptance. Most of the MKs have come across the river since the nomads attack, but missing are Axel and Mohawk, the pride's males. The punks, they wouldn't be accepted here, and then there would be a big, big fight, I think. So it's just as well they're not around. Axel and Mohawk haven't abandoned their pride, but they've retreated to the far south of their territory, on the west bank of the river. The four nomads remain in the north of the MK's territory. The nomads' roars echo down the valley. the chorus. 
The nomads are throwing down the gauntlet to the aging kings. With cubs and their pride to protect, Axel and Mohawk must respond. They might be old, but there's still some fight left in them. The brothers set off, pushing north. They sent Mark with Urin, leaving a clear warning to the nomads that they're a force to be reckoned with. This is still their kingdom. are undeterred. They rise to the challenge and push south, traveling through the night. <laughs> heading deeper into MK territory. Thor leads the way as they leave calling cards of their own. Under the cloak of darkness, they sweep through the punk's realm. Is up with the nomads. So the nomads are just a couple of hundred meters over there. I mean, they've moved five miles in one night. They're pushing closer to the punks, but also to the cubs. The cubs are probably another two miles down south, so they're not that far away, really. With the nomads a little too close for comfort, Sam is back on the trail of the five MK cubs and their mothers. Almost as soon as she finds them, the mothers leave. The mothers up and left, and now we're sitting here with five beautiful cubs, um, all to ourselves. So it's quite, it's quite amazing. We are officially lion babysitters. <laughs> Away from their mother's watchful gaze, the cubs have the chance to play. Crazy watching these little cubs, you can really see the different characters coming through. Spotty's up to his old tricks, trying to dominate his siblings. Oh, look at Spotty. And he just seems really confident and he looks like he's gonna be quite a brave little guy. Size. Oh, somebody's just startled them. A hooded vultures just landed. Oh, they're running away. Bad, bad babysitters. <laughs> we haven't protected them from the vultures. <laughs> And just like that, the cubs have fled into the bushes. We're just gonna stay here for now. We're not gonna follow the cubs um, because they've got so nervous from this hooded vulture landing. It's probably just best to let them be so they can sort themselves out. Um, you don't wanna follow them when they're already scared. 
All she can do is wait and hope Rosa and her sister come back soon. Meanwhile, Nathan leaves the nomads and heads north to see how the Hollywoods are doing in the far-flung reaches of their territory. Hopefully see if we can pick them up along the river. It's a little bit more open and see if they've come down to drink. Ah, there they are. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like five of the Hollywoods flying here quite close to the river, actually, and staring at all the pukas and impalas in the distance. They're so obviously quite hungry. Ah, oh, there's Ava. It's fantastic to see them now, all together. It's not long before the Hollywoods are on the move. Ava, who seems to have mostly recovered from her injuries, spots a lone kudu antelope. She's always been the Hollywood's most successful hunter. But this time she holds off to let the younger ones do the running. It's amazing the speed which they sort of eat this kudu compared to a tough buffalo or a hippo. I mean, they have just almost half gone through it already, and, and it's only just happened. They need to be quick. It isn't long before the scavengers begin to arrive. And look at this, the first vulture already coming in, second vulture already coming in. When one drops, they all follow. allow them to fight over the scraps. A yellow-billed kite also steals tidbits. different matter. All the crocodiles in the, in the river are slowly starting to move uh, towards the beach. <laughs> Belly's full. Ava and the older female seem happy to let this one go. But young Nova refuses to relinquish the kill. There are so few prey animals this far north. Every scrap is worth fighting for. Zena steps in to help. Leaving the crocs to squabble over the dregs. Nova's not leaving anything to chance. Nova 
Nova's brought the carcass all the way up the bank and is dragging it away into the bushes. But I mean, she's really taking it far away. She doesn't want to be disturbed by the vultures or anyone. The Hollywoods have done well. It's a good meal that will satisfy all six of them for a while. There's a few uh, barrel stomachs again now, so which is great. Retreating to the far north, where prey is scarce, is a risk. But so far, it's paid off. Back in the south, in the heart of the MK territory, Sam has been waiting, patiently, with the pride's best kept secret. She's finally rewarded. Rosa and her sister return, and the cubs feel safe enough to come out of hiding. It's moments like this where you just love your job. Such amazing grooming between mum and cubs, and you can see the affection that they have for their babies. Oh, wonderful! Both mothers are grooming them, and it's just so sweet how they, how the cubs really want affection. You know, they love coming to mum for reassurance. Keeping their cubs out of harm's way is tiring work. They look exhausted. No time for the mums to sleep and they're putting the babies to bed. Yeah, it's just really amazing to watch these cubs and it's gonna be so so nice to see them develop over the over the next couple of weeks. But the cub's safety is far from guaranteed. The nomads are still on the offensive and they haven't faced a direct challenge from anyone. They're treating the MK Pride Land as if it already belongs to them. To confident Thor, nowhere is out of bounds. He's left his brothers to explore the other side of the river, the Ensefu Pride's east bank. Thor feels so sure of himself. He advertises his presence challenging anyone to confront him. It's a rookie mistake. Only half a mile away on the west bank, the punks hear his lone calls. Two against one. This could be their best chance to reassert their authority. Nathan follows the roars too, and he picks up the punks by the river. Mohawk has come down and is starting to cross. Axel's right behind him. They look pretty keen. Hot on Thor's trail, the two brothers cross to the east bank as well. They're all now trespassing in Ensefu territory. It's a gamble, but with Thor on his own, this is the best chance to confront him. Nathan can sense that something big is about to go down. So he calls in Sam to help cover the action. Unable to cross the river in the crew jeep, she can only try and follow him from the west bank. Nathan's just radioed to let me know that the two punks have crossed to the other side where Thor is, and um, that could be quite dangerous for him. He's only strong when he's got his brothers with him. This could possibly be the opportunity that the punks have needed, uh, having the, the numbers up on the nomads for the first time since they've entered this area. 
Darkness falls with Thor on his own in Insefu territory, and the punks in pursuit. At dawn, Thor's early morning roar wakes Sam, and she heads off to try and find him. in the river and looking really unsure. Thor is now back on the same side of the river as his brothers. He calls to them, and they respond. Sam pushes ahead to find the other three nomads. seem subdued. The nomads are these, this force to be reckoned with, but when you think of them alone, they are still young males. So I thought it was probably like, you know, I need to get back to the rest of my boys and just um, stay safe. Just after Sam arrives, Thor appears. In broad daylight, it's clear he's had a run-in with someone during the night. Oh, wow. Does not look pleasant. And he looks like Thor had a bit of a teaching last night or early hours of this morning. There's little doubt who it was. One-on-one, -on -one, I'd probably put my money on Mohawk. But to be honest, it might have been like the, the hit that the nomads needed just to knock them back down to earth a little and remind them that they aren't the biggest males in the area yet. Um, they're just lucky that they fall males together. Just watching these nomads now and seeing how uh, Thor looks quite deflated. It's the first time we've seen them not look as impressive, and it's the first time we've seen that they might also, you know, still be young males that are, that are learning. It's an unwelcome new experience for the boys. Now, it's their turn to lie low for a while. cross back to the west bank of the river. They regroup in the heart of their territory for the first time since being scattered by the nomads. Axel and Mohawk join their family. With Thor bruised and battered, and the nomads in retreat, they reclaim their land. It's prime habitat for hunting. The river draws in a constant stream of thirsty prey, 
It's why the nomads were so eager to take it over. But now the MKs reign over their pride lands once more. Nathan's on the trail of a herd of buffalo, heading straight to the river and the waiting MKs. Buffaloes turn up, then they, uh, they just can't say no. The MKs make their move. Together, they can take on the most dangerous giants in Luangla. of the MKs, it stood little chance. The pride is back together and looking strong once more. Things are looking good for them, which obviously means great, uh, great news for the cubs as well. The nomad's future looks a little less rosy. Still keeping a low profile in MK territory, Thor slowly recovers from his fight with Mohawk. His injuries were more serious than initially appeared. days of rest before he'll be able to move very far. But the nomads are a resilient band of brothers. And once Thor's better, they'll have a decision to make. Do they head north to try their luck with the Hollywoods again? stick around to seek revenge against Axel and Mohawk. It's anyone's game now. 